Hi, and welcome to this video on reference counting. So if we write this line of code, my var equals 10, remember what's actually happening is Python is creating an object of type integer with a value of 10 at some memory address, let's say a thousand in this case. And my var is a pointer to that object. My var is actually the reference, the memory address of that object. In this case, let's say a thousand. So we can start keeping track of these objects that are created in memory. We can keep track of them by keeping track of their memory address and how many variables are pointing to them. How many other variables in our Python code are pointing to that same object. So in this case, we only have one reference. And so the reference count for that memory address is one. But let's say we write this other line of code, other var equals my var. Now remember, we are dealing with pointers, right? We're dealing with memory addresses, references. When we say other var equals my var, we are not taking the value 10 and assigning it to other var. We're actually taking the reference of my var and assigning that reference, 1000, to other var. In other words, other var is also pointing to that same object in memory. So it's really an, you know, important to understand that distinction. We do not have two separate objects of value 10 and my var points to one and other var points to another one. No, when we say other var equals my var, we're actually sharing the reference. And so the counter in this case will go up to 2. Right, so the reference count is now two. Now let's say that my var goes away. Either it falls out of scope, or maybe we assign it to a different object in memory, maybe even assign it to none. Then that reference goes away, and the reference count goes down to one. And let's say other var also goes away. So at some point in time, maybe it goes out of scope. Now there is nothing left and the reference count therefore drops down to zero. At that point, the Python memory manager recognizes that and says, oh, okay, there's no object left. I don't need it anymore. There are no, sorry, there are no references left. I don't need this anymore. And it throws away the object. And that object goes away and the space it used up can now be reused by Python when it's running our program. So this is called reference counting. And that's something that the Python memory manager does for us. We don't have to worry about this. It's doing it automatically, right? But just keep in mind, that's what's going on with the reference counting and when we create variables. And then later, we'll look at something else called garbage collection, which is related to this. So when before we get to the code, we're going to look very quickly at how we can find the reference count of a variable in Python. The sys module has a get ref count function that we can use and we call it by sys.getRefCount and we pass in the variable name. So we put the variable name in there and we'll look at that closer down the road. But what's happening here is we're passing a reference to my var, right? We're passing that reference. So when we pass my var to get ref count, it's actually creating another reference to that same object in memory, right? So there's a kind of a downside to using get ref count in that it always increases the reference count by one because simply the act of passing my var to the function creates another reference to that same variable because variables are passed by reference in Python. And again, we'll get to that in more detail later. So there is another function we can use that doesn't have that drawback. It's in the C types module. It's certainly at a lower level. It's basically starting to dig down into the C libraries. And this is just what it is. C types dot C long from address, etc. The difference here is that we're passing the memory address. So ID of my var. So because we're passing the memory address, not the reference, we're passing the actual integer value, let's say a thousand in the example we had before, 
it doesn't affect the reference count. And so this is a truer, more exact uh, count of the number of references. So let's switch to code and take a look at all that in some detail. We'll start by looking at the sys module and we'll use the get ref count from that module first. So we'll have to import it. So let's import sys. Then we should create a variable and I'm going to use a list and we'll see in some upcoming lessons why I'm not using an integer here because you might be surprised at the answer we get. So I'll create this variable a. Now remember what does it mean by saying a equals 1, 2, 3? 1, 2, 3 was created as an object in memory at some memory address, which we can find. Let's call it, um, well, actually, it's just printed out. Okay, it's that memory address. Now, when you run this code, you'll get a different number. So we have this object created in memory, and a points to that memory address. a is a pointer. So now we can use the sys.getRefCount. And get ref count expects the variable name as its parameter. So a in this case. Now what this means is that we're passing a to get ref count. And its argument is taking the same reference that a is telling it. So it's going to point to the same object in memory. So really our reference count is going to become 2 when get ref count runs. And indeed that's what we get, 2. So you can use get ref count. It's not an issue. Just keep, just remember to subtract one from that answer because the simple fact of passing a into it, of passing the variable into it, has increased the reference count by one. So if you don't want to have to deal with that, then we can use the C types library. So we have to import C types first. And then we have that long expression that I showed you in the slides. So I'm going to create a wrapper function called ref count. That's going to take the address, and if you want to use annotations, we can specify that the address is going to be an integer, and it's going to return that. Okay, so c types dot c long dot from address of the address, which is the argument here, the first argument in the function, dot value. Okay, that way we don't have to type that whole long expression every time. So now we can get the reference count of a, but we have to pass it the memory address. So we can do ref count id of a. And we get a reference count of 1, which is what we expect. Now you might be thinking, like, wait a minute. You said that we get a ref count here of 2 because we passed a into this function. Aren't we doing the same thing here? We're passing a inside this function. Why isn't the reference count 2? Well, what's happening is id of a is getting evaluated first. So indeed, when we call id of a, when id is running, then the reference count to that memory address, 18310115, is 2, right? because it's got a reference. We pass it as a, as a parameter. So the argument of that function has a reference to that same object in memory. So at that point, the reference is 2. But id then finishes running and returns the memory address okay, that we have up here. So by the time we call ref count, id has finished running and it has released its pointer to that memory address. Right? That point is gone. So now the reference count is indeed back to 1. Right? So this is no different than doing it this way. Um, let me copy the memory address that we just took, pass it in here, and we get ref count of 1. So that's exactly the same thing. Right? So don't be confused by the fact that the ref count is 1 even though a is here. That's because by the time ref count is called, ID has finished running, it has already returned the memory address, and therefore it has released whatever reference it had to that memory address. Okay, so now we have A equals 1, 2, 3. Let's go ahead and say B is equal to A. Okay, so B equals A. And now we can call ref count again on the ID of A. Well, before we do that, 
let's take a look at the ID of B. Let's just make sure that it is indeed pointing to the same um, location in memory, and it is. As you can see, A and B are both pointing to the same location in memory. So our reference count should be 2. So we can say ref count of the ID. Now we can use either A or B, they're identical, and we can see the ref count is 2. Now we can go further and say C is equal to A, and we can look at the ref count of the ID of A, and again now we have a reference count of 3. Now if I change C to something else, if I say C equals 10, for example, now if I do ref count of ID of A, you'll see the ref count is back down to 2. And if I set B equal to maybe none, okay, then we can do ref count of ID. Now I have to use A. I can't use ID of B because that would be a different object, right? The ID of B, let's put that in quick, ID of B, as you can see, is not the same as it was before. That's because we've set B equal to none, which is actually a real object that has a, you know, an existence in memory that it's pointing to. So here, if I look at the reference count of A, however, I get down to 1. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to store the memory address. So I'm going to say A um, ID equals ID of A. Then I'm going to set A equal to none. And then we're going to call ref count on A ID. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I cannot call ref count of ID of A after I've set A equal to none. I still want to look at this original um, memory address. Okay. So now the, the answer you're going to get here may very well be different than the answer I'm going to get. And I'll get into that into a lot more detail later. But let's take a look. So I still have a reference count of 1 for A. That's just weird, you know, for that old memory address. Okay, so maybe I'll run it again. And now it's 0, okay. Or if I run it again, ooh, now it's some weird value. All right, so this is because we are using that C library. So we are actually, in this code, we are specifying the memory address we're interested in, okay, which was this memory address over here. When the last reference to that memory address was dropped, when we set A equal to none, remember what happens. The memory manager frees up that, that memory address, essentially tosses away the object, and that memory address becomes available for something else. And that's what we're seeing here, right? So typically in Python, we don't work with memory addresses. I'm just doing that as an illustration and just to try and understand what's going on behind the scenes. But what's happening here is that what is stored at that memory address, once I set A equal to none, we don't know what's stored in there. It's probably just junk, right? Or maybe something else. So in Python, we never deal with memory addresses directly. It's very dangerous to do that. Um, and as you can see here, you can't rely on that. Okay, so we've got to be careful. Again, just for illustration purposes, you're never going to have to use that in Python unless you're trying to debug stuff or figure out you know, what's going on, uh, especially with things like memory leaks. All right. So I'll see you in the next lesson where we'll talk about garbage collection, which is related to reference counting, but it is not the same as reference counting. It's a different process that Python utilizes to also keep up with, uh, you know, cleaning up the memory and, and keeping things freed up so we don't have memory leaks. Thanks, and I'll see you in a bit.